make it tonight because I guess she has a little stomach flu, so uh, we will be in the meeting with her. So uh, we can begin with a moment of silence for the teacher. had the opportunity to review the minutes of August 24, 2015. Any questions, concern, or motion? Motion to approve minutes from August 24. Second. Ms. Davis? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Thank you. And Council, you've had an opportunity to review current expenses. Any questions, concern, or motion? This for a side, the kind of the middle band-aid, we, we had to repair a sidewalk driveway approach in front of uh, Plain City Computers. He went ahead and repaired it. We reimbursed Mr. Snow. Okay. What's the environmental services? Okay, I see the environmental services. Mass on. Mass on. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. They do our lab testing for our water and wastewater. Sure. Mass lab environmental yeah. services. Yeah, they do our testing of samples from the water and wastewater. How often is that done? By them? Because it's not a reoccurring charge you see every month. Wait, how often do we send samples to them? Twice a week. Motion. Motion to approve the expenses as submitted. Ms. Davis? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. All right, I noticed uh, today that we have several speakers and visitors. Um, I might count five. Um, we're going to start with uh, Mr. Erickson. Scott from Rock Mill has a small presentation. Uh, Thank you. I said uh, my name is Scott Erickson from Rock Mill Financial. Um, Thank you. Basically, well, this is kind of a continuance of some of the work we've done prior and as a result of uh, some of uh, council's deliberations from their retreat. And so it's intended to be sort of a high level of you know, what to look for next in terms of steps that you will be looking at moving through this year and um, then into, into the next spring. Um, so this is kind of like a, a high level look at <coughs> Potential levy options or, or things that you might need to do between now and December and then in March in order to, to get something potentially on the ballot for um, prospective projects. Um, this first page, the, the needs of the village, this isn't intended to be a comprehensive list. This is just some sort of high level items and, and further deliberation is required and exploring the, the projects that will be coming forward and that sort of thing. But, we have um, identified some things with the Village Services Center, um, the consolidation type projects, which will include you know, police station, administrative offices, maintenance uh, offices, council chambers, utility offices. Um, there's also been some identified improvements at the park um, with restrooms, possibly some, some paving or some parking improvements, um, as well as downtown streetscape, roadway paving, and uh, potentially some water and sewer type improvements. <coughs> So like I said, this is not necessarily a comprehensive list, but just some of the items that have been identified um, through administration and council. So when it comes to paying for these projects, moving on to the next page, how is money raised for these sorts of things? Um, you have a few options, uh, the first of which is a property tax. And we'll, I'll, I'll illustrate these a little bit further on in, in the presentation, but three options are a property tax, an income tax, a bond issue, or some combination of those three. Therein. 
I mean, before we'll go to the property tax first, what is the property tax? <clears throat> the property tax is paid by local individuals as well as businesses. Um, it's based on your assessed value of your property or the business's property. Um, property taxes are levied in mills. And I illustrated a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> to give you an idea of the most recent collection year, your individual tax base versus your business tax base is about 81% to 19%, which means that residents would be picking up um, the portion of a property tax that is roughly an 80-20 split between uh, residents and business within the village. Um, one mill is about $35 per $100,000 home value. Uh, the way that calculation is done is uh, a, a property value of 100000 uh, you take 35% of that, that gets you what's called the assessed value, and then um, you multiply by, by the one mill to get to $35. So $100,000 home has an assessed value of $35,000, <coughs> which comes to about $35 per one mill. Um, property tax would provide annual income to the village year over year um, from the first year of collection through whatever the final collection year is um, levied on the ballot. Moving on to the income tax. An income tax is paid both by the residents, local businesses, as well as some non-residents. So those folks who come into the, the village to, to work, their income is also taxed as well. Um, and we'll discuss that a little bit on, on further is why that makes a difference between, uh, there may be a significant difference between income tax and property tax in terms of expense to the local residents. Um, the uh, income tax is also for whatever length or duration is placed on the ballot between the first year of collection and the final year of collection. But it's an annual collection to the village in terms of revenues. Moving on to the bond issue. A bond issue is much like the property tax levy. Um, you have the same uh, business to individual split here. And uh, it's paid by the individuals and businesses. Same, same collection in terms of um, levied mills, same in, in terms of assessed value and how it's collected. Uh, however, with a bond issue, it's the money is provided to the village as an upfront lump sum um, by means of a bond issue. So your uh, residents would approve of the bond issue. You would then sell securities in the markets or to a local bank um, to get an upfront, upfront lump sum. And then the collections over years would be provided to pay the debt service on those bonds. Um, in the case of uh, the village, most recent uh, assessed value uh, equates to a one mill that will support approximately 1.275 million as a bond issue. And that's estimated for over 25 years, just using a, a ballpark estimate of about 3.75% interest rate. So you can kind of um, size that based on one mill. So two mills would produce a little over $2.5 million. Now, what's the cost to taxpayers? Um, if you can follow along this chart, <coughs> this kind of gives us a look at <coughs> excuse me, what is uh, an estimated annual need or a potential estimated annual need. You'll see that $130,000, if, if the village desires to receive $130,000 um, on an annual basis, that equates to about a 0.1% income tax. The equivalent property tax to produce the same $130,000 is about 1.72 mills. And then moving across the page there, you see the estimated annual income tax cost of $51.89 and property tax cost of $107.67. And those are based on the U.S. Census Bureau's median home value and median household incomes. So there's a number of different ways you can crunch those numbers. We chose to use the median values from the U.S. Census Bureau as sort of a starting point to just kind of give you an idea of what these mills and what these percentages do in terms of the cost to the resident. Um, then as you move up the scale here from 130,000 incrementally, you see the, the income tax 0.1%, 0.2%, all the way up through 0.5%. If there's any questions about the, this chart, I'm happy to, to answer, but it's fairly self-explanatory. And again, that um, if you look at, for example, the 0.5%, 8.59 mills, we see somewhat of a, dis of a disparity between the income tax and the property tax, 259 versus 538. That is, again, because with the income tax, you do have some outside residents that work in the community that will be supporting that income tax as well. It's not just a burden carried by solely by your residents and your, and your local businesses.
moving on to pros and cons. <coughs> pros and income tax. Um, an income tax will capture tax revenues from taxpayers other than just the residents, as I was just saying. Um, it's less expensive on the residents, as you saw from the chart, um, than the property tax, basically because that burden is distributed to a wider pool than just the local residents and um, community businesses. The amount of the tax an individual paid is based just on their income, and uh, the income tax grows with wealth and population. For example, um, with an income tax, if, you're, if your overall wealth income then over a year, over two years, goes to $30 million, the income tax stays the same, so your collections actually increase year over year, um, versus with a property tax, it's based on the dollar amount. So as your assessed valuations appreciate, that, that tax levy is rolled back. You do receive some new money based on uh, new construction, but with the existing assessed valuation, the tax millage is rolled back, so you don't receive quite as, quite as much of a kick year over year from the uh, property tax that you would receive from an income tax in an expanding tax base. Um, income tax cons, subject to economic cycles, um, that's still a little bit fresh in everybody's mind from 2007, 2008, everybody knows that you know, sometimes incomes get hit, and in that case, you might see some volatility in your income tax collections. So that is one of the cons of the income tax. Property tax pros, uh, the revenues are generally more predictable than income tax. Like I said, income tax based on economic cycles can have more volatility in it. Um, property taxes tend to stay more more stable over time, so you'll kind of have a, a better idea of what your uh, overall year-over-year -year revenues are going to be from a property tax. Um, and like I said, it also grows with new construction, but in an expanding um, economic cycle, you might not see quite as much bang for your buck with the property tax as you would from an income tax. Cons to the property tax. Uh, the equivalent property tax. Um, from that chart, you'll see is more expensive than the income tax. And again, with the economic cycle of growth, it's not as productive as the word we like to use in terms of how much additional revenues can be generated based on economic growth and new construction. So where does that leave us? Next steps. <coughs> kind of uh, identify further, um, obviously, what the projects are going to be, what the costs are going to be. Uh, we need to receive estimates uh, for the construction costs of the new Consolidated Village Service Center, complete additional estimates based on other improvements and capital needs, you know, what council identifies, what administration identifies as the priority projects. And from that, once we have the actual costs in our hands, we can kind of calculate what the equivalent income and property tax will be, or estimates will be based on those um, project costs and what the upfront expense is going to be or the expense over time is going to be. Um, present those to council and then and then act. Um, council needs to act prior to the board of election filing deadlines. It says in your books there uh, the exact deadlines will be confirmed with bond council. I printed these before I actually confirmed with bond council, but I did receive word back. I'll just, wait, I'll just give you this note so you don't have to write anything down. But basically, the deadline is December 16th for the March 15th uh, ballot. That's 90 days prior. However, it does require an ordinance and a resolution, and the ordinance, as you know, require three readings and potentially a 30-day waiting period. So, and if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Like I said, this is just intended to be sort of a high level to kind of get the wheel spinning and, and let you know what what to expect between now and next March. The cost to the taxpayers um, with the income tax, we don't allow swapping and we don't have a lot of industries or businesses here, so most people work out of Plain City, mm -hmm. which means they pay an income tax to whatever city they work for, That's which right. is usually 2%, and then ours as well. So does that account that would have for to be, in here? Yeah, that is, not, that is not included in these numbers, so that's something that would have to be calculated to, like I said, once we have the actual costs of everything up front, we can do the precise calculations and, and considerations between the property tax and the income tax. You're exactly right. <coughs> Is there any historical research that goes into looking at what, historically speaking, has been more successful in this area, whether property versus income tax? Yeah, absolutely. That, that would be um, part of the process between now and when council decides to, to make a final decision. Um, we do look at uh, past election history. Uh, both here in the village and in the surrounding communities and determine everything from what works best if it's an income tax or property tax if it works you know, 
best as a special election, if it's a, you know, so we, so we dive down into the data pretty deeply. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Mr. Erickson. You're welcome. Appreciate it. I'm sure I'll leave this copy for later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. I promised Mr. Erickson that I'd get you a minute out of here as we had other things thank to do. You. So we're going to go back to our uni uh, usual order of things. We'll do our reports and then we'll move on to the, the speakers that we have. Uh, <coughs> so uh, starting with the fiscal officer. Uh, I forwarded you all a copy of my audit. I didn't know if there was any questions regarding it. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to report. So if you had any questions, you'd be glad to answer them. So there is none. That's all I have. Easy enough. Chief? I just had a few things. Uh, I attended the, I, well, I spoke to the Plain City Business Association as a guest speaker a couple weeks ago. Uh, also, Officer Philip Greenbaum attended some mechanical and shotgun breaching training at Opata. Uh, Officer Eric Connor, who we had appointed the last time or received uh, permission or whatever to hire him full time, passed his physical that was required by the police and fire pension. Uh, he has been working full time since September the 3rd. And it's doing a good job. Uh, the 2015 sober or drive sober get pulled over mobilization ended. We participated in that, which is, that means we're eligible for some free, uh, very expensive equipment that we we should be getting pretty soon. Uh, the down car, the downtown car show went without incident except a few parking complaints. There was a, there was a pretty good turnout for that. And just a reminder to lock your vehicles at night. Uh, there's uh, there was a rash of vehicle break-ins in a couple of neighborhoods, and we're working on some leads now, trying to figure out who that was. And that's all I have at this time. Thank you, Chief. What was your uh, A couple of things on Friday, September fourth, um, during that quick storm we had rolled through, and we lost power water and wastewater treatment plants sustained a lightning strike that did considerable damage to some pumps, motors, relays. Um, Wade's working with contractors and his staff to get everything back up and uh, putting together a price sheet that we can turn in. We will make a uh, insurance claim to recover uh, our losses in that um, event. Um, Lantern Lane pavement repairs are complete. We are working on closing and winterizing the Aquatic Center. Uh, Inga and I met with the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation regarding a grant opportunity that we are um, considering and, and will probably apply for in the very near future. And last thing is Renee Dale and I met with um, an architect um, week and a half ago and we will be meeting with another one tomorrow in regards to Mr. Erickson's uh, request for getting some cost estimates on a, a city hall complex and what that looks like so we'll be continuing working with the architects to get that to them. Mr. Ron, one of the things I know we talked about at our retreat was kind of also figuring out what it would save us to close the buildings that we would be closing. So I don't know if at the same time you're putting together that estimate, you can get that information. We are. We've been compiling that data and working with Rock Mill and trying to, we need we need a couple of square footage estimates so that we can identify where our energy costs are going to be before we can put some hard numbers to that. But that's, that's a significant reason why we're doing or considering or wanting a, a new city hall is because of the inefficiencies with it and um, some cost savings that we will recover through multiple copiers and uh, redundant personnel, um, <coughs> Wi-Fi, internet, things like that that um, we're paying for out of four buildings currently and to have them all in one facility would, would be a, an instant savings in that respect. So we'll certainly uh, continue to work with them to get those numbers put together. And that's all I have, unless there's any further questions. Well, right, moving on, uh, President Pro Tem. Uh, I have nothing to report as President Pro Tem today. Uh, so, sir. Um, I met with Renee last week. We have, um, Regional Income Tax Authority has uh, proposed 
a model change to the municipal income tax code based upon statutory changes that occurred. These would have take effect January, January 1, 2016. Um, unfortunately, didn't get a whole lot of lead time on having to jump on this. So, um, I mean, literally, the, uh, they came out with the actual proposed model code about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, so there are some things in there that are going to be difficult uh, to try to get in a very short period of time, but we're going to work on it. We'll get it done. Um, I did put a call into uh, Rita today just to see if there's a way to kind of streamline the process to make it a little bit quicker um, and more efficient so that, number one, you're not spending a lot of legal costs to have be drafted, but also um, give us a much easier transition between the one model code from our existing code. Because the language is kind of is considerably different, and, uh, and it would take a lot of work. Uh, we're working on that. We'll get it done. Uh, I think the proposal that I've made to them makes sense. Uh, that we'll just kind of have our existing code effective through December 31st, 2015, because we have to be able to collect back taxes. So we have to have a code in place to collect back. January 1, 2016, that would be adopted the model code. So it'd be, it'd be a lot easier to do that. Even within that model code, there is some things that we're going to have to tailor uh, just to the village, but it's not nearly as uh, tall a task as trying to merge the existing ordinances. Um, other than that, just uh, resolutions. We have the one case that's pending that is still without, well, we just got a judge on the case and we're getting a new case scheduled, so uh, that's on the long lane yep. litigation. Otherwise, that's it. Perfect. Thank you very much. Any questions? Right, we meet this Wednesday. Um, we're looking to finalize, um, as a committee, the uh, property maintenance codes, and um, hoping to have a public hearing on October 21st. Thank you. Uh, BZA, we've had no need to meet, so nothing to report there. Uh, CIC. Um, the only thing I have to report is it's kind of separate from CIC, but we did attend a um, seminar. Wade and I attended a seminar last Friday in regards to um, GIS and, and how we can start utilizing GIS. Um, could be a countywide thing, and we're working with David Kelt to figure out how we can put that all together. So it was a great uh, it was a great seminar. I think we got a lot out of it, and we're going to continue to. Uh, do some research on how we can move in that direction. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. All right. Uh, parks. Um, you've all had the opportunity. I think uh, it's been circulated the the result of our several meeting effort to uh, coordinate and uniformly provide uh, direction for the usage of the park in the events of special events and park rentals. Uh, we also put together a grant application package with the idea that we would have a grant committee. Um, I don't know if personnel and finance is discussed. I assume that uh, Mr. Bonds discussed that personnel and finance that we would set aside some money for the grant committee to allow uh, grants to uh, divvy that out or hand that out uh, to interested parties for use of their park. We developed an overview of the grant application package and what we thought uh, would be some guidelines for that particular committee to hand out the money. Um, the mayor had indicated to me uh, that she wanted to be here um, for the, uh, the vote on this, so we'll table that, but um, I would like to hear everyone's response, uh, opinions, and whatnot, so uh, we can at least have something permanent or something ready on the table uh, next time around when she's here. So, uh, questions, concerns, thoughts, criticisms, what have you? What was the purpose of raising the rates, double to what they are now? Was other things looked at, or other communities looked at, and did we look at resident versus non-resident like they have? We didn't look at a resident versus non-resident. I don't think. I mean, we did talk about that and came up with the idea that it was fine just to keep it the way it was and not make that distinction. We were actually fortunate enough to have uh, on our committee uh, Roberta. What's Roberta's last name? Sorry, Roberta. Um, but anyway, she works for Columbus Parks and Rec. Um, and so she was a font, she is a font of knowledge as to what is generally um, 
industry standard, if you will. Um, and honestly, she kept pushing us to say, these are too low, these are too low. And if you'd ask her about these particular rental fees right now, she would say, they're way too low, they're way under market value. Um, so I think she would have them be much higher, and we were all reticent to raise them at all, but recognizing that we have ongoing costs in the park, they're not getting any cheaper, so the rates do need to go up. We obviously want to establish a capital improvement fund, so these fees would go towards capital improvements at the park and be solely, you know, solely go to the park, uh, park fund. So um, I think the idea at the end of the day that we came up collectively with was, while this does seem high, from what we had it at, um, in the industry, it's not. It's actually low. Um, was she looking at the city? I mean, the city. She was looking at the city. We're not going to even come close. To no, we're not going to compete with the high. city of Columbus. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, when we hey, honestly, we were relying largely on her opinion uh, in determining what was the right amount. Um, and like I said, she would say this is still too low, even though you know the amenities may not be the same what you're you know getting with the city of Columbus. Um, so. I suppose the way one can look at it is, like any other business, if you price a product and it's too high, it's not going to sell. When you lower your price until it sells. I mean, at the end of the day, this isn't set in stone. If this particularly doesn't work for 2016 and we don't have park rentals, then lesson learned, and we move it down until we, you know, until we reach that point where it's it, the product is priced correctly. Um, I mean, none of us pretend to be experts in pricing what the value of a park is. We don't have such a person. Um, but we do have such a person who is an expert at pricing Columbus parks, and her advice is that this is under <coughs> um, Whether this results in lower individuals using the park or not, that remains to be seen. Now, of course, um, the budget will ask council to set aside an amount of money for the grant program. Um, and we, in the grant application package, we indicated that we didn't want any one entity to receive any more than 20%. That way we gave the ability to the, we took away the ability from the um, committee to dole it out all to one entity. And that way we ensured that at least five entities over the course of the year uh, would receive an application, would receive a grant uh, from, from, the, from the committee. So while the fees are going up, the fact of the matter is, hopefully there will be some money put aside by this council to offset some of those fees for whomever the grant committee deems appropriate. In order to further the goals and the purpose of the of the grant. So is the deposit part of the rental fee, or is it in addition to? It would be in addition to, and if the parks returned in favorable condition, they would get that deposit back. We talked about other ways to go about doing the deposit, and whether they were too low, uh, given you know the amount of damage that someone can do to the park. Uh, but uh, historically speaking, Mr. Vaughn felt that. You know, we didn't need to raise the deposits any more than they are. So, um, you know, obviously it's a fluid thing. If one year that are too low, I mean, we can revisit that as well. But any other questions? Yes, um, I I say twelve fifty, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars a day for park rental. I'm I'm speaking on behalf of the Plain City Events Committee. That'll kill any events that they will have in the park. Um, I did call the Union County Fairgrounds. We can rent Union County Fairgrounds all 48 acres for one day for $1,000. Um, Delaware County Fairgrounds has a flea market on Sundays. They are charged $305 for the use of a whole fairground. Uh, Marysville, as long as you rent a building, you can use the grounds for free. London, I did not call Madison County Fairgrounds, but London Parks, they are free. West Jeff, pretty much the same. I gave you a packet on Westerville. They would waive park fees for um, event committees. I, I just think this is just too much money. Um, I know you are talking about having a grant program in place. Excuse me, I'm sick. <clears throat> Kevin, was that going to be under parks? It's Currently it's under mayor and administration. Okay, and what do you have for that? Is it $3,000? And that was just kind of like a placeholder, as I mentioned, in personnel and finances. So we didn't that that cost uh, was discussed in in parks committee. I'm sorry, and they knew they couldn't set that. That this body had to set that. So when I put three thousand in your budget, it was kind of as a placeholder to be determined by this group. Pardon me, but if you guys get a grant, that ought to go into trees. 
all those trees are old like all of us in here and they're going to age out but i don't know if i'm out of line i'm not into this too much um we'll bring that up we did get a, a email earlier this spring about a gentleman that wants to donate i forget how many trees i'd be willing to plant them i can run the equipment the auger i run the bobcat and drill bit Okay, maybe we'll have you talk to Mr. Vaughn after me. I might labor to be donated. Okay. It was an, in an email that from Bob forwarded back in uh, April. If you would like to donate 25 to 30 hardwood trees. So yeah, so that that's in a copper. But but back to the Pardon me if I interrupted you. That's, that's okay. Thank you. If I may address some of the the rates and what others charge, and just to point out. For, for many, many, many years, um, the general fund supported the parks and the pool. Parks would get typically $50,000 a year. I don't get that any, or the parks doesn't get that anymore. I don't get that in my budget. So we're trying to do as much as we can in the park and maintain it to the standards that we were even 10 years ago without that $50,000. So we've got to generate the money from somewhere and the, the balance is going to be like Mr. Kennedy said that we don't hurt ourselves by getting rid of events but when we don't charge enough or we um, give fees we waive fees it hurts our ability to to operate the park and maintain the park so um, you know that fifty thousand dollars is a lot that we're trying to work out. So look here. for other sources to find other alternatives. Um, are you done, Kevin? With that in mind, you know, it's not like we have people beating down our door wanting to rent the park. So, you know, if you're going to raise the rent rates and you're going to lose Plain City events, the spring event we have, the fall event, you're not going to make anything. And then if you're giving grants, that's borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. You're not going to be making money. Well, part of what we have done when we determined what the proper cost should be was we looked at the amount of staff that we had to put in place just to have someone rent the park. And at the end of the day, what we were renting the park for this year, we lose money every time someone rents our park. And no business stays in business by losing money on a particular product. And that is just good, sound business. And if the product needs to cost X number of dollars in order to be sustainable, then it's got to cost X number of dollars. And if that means no fall festival or no other event, then that's what it means. We cannot continue to take a loss on a product and operate that product. We will not have a product that's quality and something that people want to use. Okay. What are your exact costs for the day of fall festival? The exact costs to put on an event is very difficult because we mow it every week, eight, so nine months. Go back to the subcontract. Yeah, let's just, if you have things you want to talk about, you need to sign the sign-in sheet, not to silence you, but I'm certainly willing to listen to you, but you have to sign the sign-in sheet and then we will uh, hear you, okay? Appreciate All that. All right, thank you. otherwise Correct. it just kind of gets chaotic and everyone talks at one time and we can't get anything done. Thank you. you. Got it. All right, go ahead, Kevin. Um, so just all of those, you know, putting gravel on the roads and maintaining trees, cutting trees down, maintaining facilities that are difficult. You, you can't put costs on an individual event other than our labor to do those. Um, and those are variable depending on the size of the event. Um, so but aren't you gonna have those costs anyhow? What you just said, mowing and gravel yeah. and so what, what is the cost for an event? What size event? <coughs> we'll, we'll talk about fall festival. That's an unfair question to ask him for, for detail to that extent. I mean, he can look it up and maybe respond some other time. But Correct. But, I mean, that's what they're saying, that these events are so costly. <coughs> you know, I would like for them to back up their statement. They have to know. They should know that to begin with, shouldn't they? Well, that's like the budget that was distributed by personnel and finance for parks shows a budget. 2016 of almost $52,000 and revenue of $37,000. So we've got a $15,000 deficit coming forward with the budget that came out of personnel and finance. So I can understand a need to generate more revenue. Correct, but they also spent $11,000 on camping software. 
every activity that the park uses is different. I mean, some requires extra more labor than others. It, you can't put, you can't say each particular time someone rents the park, it's $1,000 and it's a full park. Because it's, sometimes it's $1,000, sometimes it's $800, sometimes it's $1,600. Everything is different. This is the cost we came up with that we figured we need in order to maintain the park and the park be self-sufficient, so to speak. Because right now, it's not. And that's bad business. Okay. And whether that means a higher, higher, more expensive product, that's what it means. But you're pricing your product too high to sell. That's your opinion. Okay. And you can vote no on it, I suppose. All but right. at the end of the day, this is what 10 other individuals determined is the right price based upon what the village needs to do in order to maintain this park and provide it for all the citizens to have. All right. Well, let's see what council thinks. And I would like to say in public meeting, and I've told you before, and you continue to throw this, this mm -hmm. software in my face, mm -hmm. and I've seen it on social media that I've made an unauthorized purchase with this software. I did not make an unauthorized purchase. This software was vetted through the Parks Committee, brought to this group, and then inserted into the budget that was approved by this entire body. I never once made an unauthorized purchase and it is software that we need to do business. Just as the police department has software to do business, our water department has software to do business. On February of 14, it was brought up to council, was asked to purchase camping software. Mr. Walter, at that time, I'll, I'll find it, I've got it here somewhere. So I do not misquote myself. That we did not think was in the best interest, here it is. I think we're a little bit afoul of what we're discussing today. If you let have me, another let issue, me address that. He brought it up. I should have the no, right to address it. No, you brought it up. You brought yes. it up. We're talking he is about the park realm. He is saying, I know keep our subject, and I would like to address that. You can address that, Kevin. <coughs> you don't need to do that here in the Then meeting. why did he need to do it here in the meeting? Because you brought it up. Stopping both of you. Mm -hmm. We're not here to talk about, we're here to talk about the park realm. You say okay. it's too expensive. Uh, so, you know, what I want and what I expect from you, mm -hmm. if you just want to vote no on it, that's fine, but that's hardly constructive. Give us something that's constructive. <coughs> I did. I what? just did when I told you how much it costs to rent Union County Fairgrounds. You know what? You, this is not County. Union County. <coughs> Correct. And it okay. is also not and I don't Columbus. know that Union County is operating in a deficit like we are, and frankly, I don't care because I'm not, we're not here in Union County. We're running Plain City. All right, so if you've got something constructive that'll make the park be self-sufficient, Go ahead and tell everybody, all right? I will. But you know what? Just sitting there with a smirk saying, this isn't going to work. You know, constructive. That's what I'd like to see. So tell us what you think they should be and why. And we can determine whether or not that's self-sufficient for the park as well. So we'll vote on this next time. I thought both documents were well thought out and addressed a lot of the um, gray areas that we were struggling with this last year concerning uh, rentals and concerning offering consideration to different groups that wanted to use the park and wanted some consideration from council. So, so I think the park committee deserves a little thanks. Well, thank you, Bob. Um, and also keep in mind, Leslie, that I think another way that we can look at this is the $3,000 that we've talked about giving the grant uh, committee, if you want that to be more, that can be more. And that is a way that the village can entice other folks to put on things in the park and offset some of these costs. I did want to ask you, has the committee thought about uh, marketing it, like being able to market it outside of, you know, residents and organizations that are here, as that been talked about? Uh, yes, we we have a, uh, an article called 12, I think we have set up 12 things to discuss um, or over our compre comprehensive plan. We didn't discuss that in particular as it relates to this, um, but I know that's one of the topics on our agenda. When we'll get to that, Ms. Ferguson, I don't know, but um, yeah. Any other questions? No? All right. So um, if anyone has any other questions or comments, obviously feel free to let all of us know before our next meeting, and then we can bring this to a vote. Uh, personnel and finance. Uh, we met on September 1st uh, where we discussed uh, Kevin's final budget, which you all have copies of. Kevin, would you like to go over that? Or does anybody have any questions? What would, what would everyone like to do? 
what I'd like to see if you could just highlight the changes from last year's budget to this if there are any substantial ones perhaps right. that would be easier kind of bring that to the rest of our attention since we weren't involved in the meeting does right. that work Kevin I'd like to see kind of a, a summary where we have uh, total budgeted expenses less general fund revenue <coughs> less dedicated fund revenue less uh, uh, access to general fund reserves and see what what it nets out at at the end of the day I can't quite see that right now yeah sure I asked for I asked Renee for that I think I, she misunderstood my question she did give up this email did this go to everybody today should did everyone get a copy of this should I pass it out yeah, okay. email and I guess there was some miscommunication between us but uh, I'll sit down with Renee and we'll get one together for the next meeting Table, table. That. Anything else from the personnel <coughs> finance? Is Rockmail being involved in this? Because I thought that was part of their deal, was that they were helping us with the budget for this year. No, that wasn't. Yeah, I don't think it was part of the deal. No. Huh. I thought that's originally why we got Rockmail. I mean, that's when it all came about last year. Was during the budget, and we needed somebody to help us budget. I thought that's why we were using. I mean, we're paying them already. I think they, they offered us uh, some criteria upon which to make budget decisions and how, how to how to make value judgments, and it was kind of a kind of like a class for for council uh, to get ready to go into the budgeting process. Or at least that's the way I viewed it. I, I was very pleased with what they presented tonight as far as uh, figuring out ways to generate future revenue. I thought that was very well presented, though. I can't recall off the top of my head, but I don't recall them in the recommendations making any recommendations as to things that I think it was when they first started. <coughs> yeah. It wasn't part of the actual recommendations that when they first started with us. I thought that was part of it. Then look over our budget and assist us. Do you think they ought to come out and help us with this budget now before we try to I think to they should right? look at it before we go. Budget right now, we're doing everything wrong what they say we're supposed to do. You two being on the personnel finance, think that there would be any benefit to have a rock book come up? Well, you think, Ryan? I think we do too. I mean, well, we'll leave it up to you if you want to engage them. Um, um, and we have an agreement with them whether that's covered by what we already have. I don't, I don't know. Anything else? No. There was a resolution. <coughs> um, that will come at the end. <coughs> Don't we? Yeah. So are we good? Yeah. Fire? Fire. You know, farms tonight. Right. I mean, we're the sister of all. Last month they used uh, 462 gallons of fuel. And uh, all the round maintenance on everything at the firehouse was around six thousand dollars, and they had thirty-seven fire runs and eighty EMS runs. And uh, they hired six new people, and one resigned already. So other than that, that's about it for this one. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, moving on to the rest of our visitors, um, Robert, Robert, Robin Daggert. Here to speak. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My name is Robin Digert, and I'm with the Columbus Dispatch. Um, I'm the field logistics operations manager. Ultimately, the delivery of the bag is my responsibility on the daily newspaper. And I understand that we've had some delivery issues in Plain City. And I just wanted to get before you tonight and reassure you that I'm on that. Um, I speak with some Madison County businesses on a weekly basis um, to stay uh, in contact with them and, and hear what they're hearing from some of their advertisers. All of our carriers are independent contractors. Um, we do terminate contracts when delivery is uh, not made in the way that we expect it to be made. Um, I'd, I'd gladly give my um, 
phone number and email address who anyone who would like to have it please contact me directly we'll skip the middle people and and address these issues I um, just wanted to make sure that you knew that that like I said we're we're on top of it we feel that we provide a service there are residents of Plain City who are contractors and earn fees from our company um, I know the residents use the bag because um, it has all the grocery ads in it and we, we just started with Giant Eagle this past week so we, we do have all the grocery ads and uh, that was mostly what I wanted to say and I gladly answer any questions or leave my phone number and, and email address for anyone who would like to contact me if there's any delivery issues please let me know directly I got a question are they supposed to hang it on the doorknob or just throw it out in the street no it's supposed to be on the porch Ooh. or the mail post if there is if the mail if the uh, mail is delivered can I get the address for this the 653 West Main 653 West Main. Right. Um, Two weeks in a row it's been like that. It's always been like that out there. On that picture I took, <coughs> half, of the, half of the ads is down in the other pile. Well, this is exactly the kind of thing that I, the information that I wanted to get because, like I said, I will address this in the end. I've got some more pictures in my, on my camera. <laughs> no, that's, that's, I, 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 I trust you. Right across from the firehouse. Okay. Now, this will be addressed, and I appreciate you letting me know. But they, they've always said, Why not just throw it out there? And then, you guys, sometimes when the guy's low on the grass, he sometimes he almost gets into it because you don't see it. Or a snowblower this winter. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I always in the snow. Right. Yeah. I, I, no, I want this cleaned up. This is not how we contract carriers to deliver. Well, if you go around town, I think you see it all over town. Well, I, I will definitely get that taken care of. But they want to try to make some laws and rules and stuff, but I think you're the, it's your place to straighten it up, and then there won't be no laws. I completely agree. Because we don't need laws. We got enough now. No, I, I, completely, I completely agree. Miss Nagger, last, uh, last meeting we discussed, um, I think it was mentioned by somebody, I want to say Mr. Bond, that um, folks can opt out and contact you if they don't want to live in the paper. That is That is correct. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for your time coming in to address it. Well, thank any, you. Any other questions? Ms. Mm -hmm. Dagger? No? All right. Uh, moving on to Darren Lane. <coughs> Good evening from the Good chief afternoon. seats. Uh, as one of your council members um, calls us back here, I just have a few questions. One, uh, and I think I know the answer to this. Does council get paid $150 per meeting? And who sets that pay since one of your council members doesn't seem to know how that comes about? Maybe if you can enlighten us. It is $150 a pay of a, a, a meeting. Um, I don't know when that was established. It was, it was set by ordinance and no seating member of council could it vote to increase previous. his his pay so it was done by a previous council thank you um, another thing is I'm here tonight as most of you know I'm running for mayor hopefully all of you know and um, I'm here to defend myself what have I done for the village uh, myself and my committee uh, there's few here we've had over 137 meetings and we've met with planning zoning we've met with a ton of people we met with builders developers landowners uh, economic developers all these meetings that we we're up at 7 o'clock every morning, so please don't say, what have we done for the village? We have a whole list of people. And I know it's all on social media, but, you know, social media, this is my campaign. I don't think this is for council to get involved in. Who, so, said, that? Who said that? You can go back through social media, Facebook. Some Leslie's people don't bother to look all at the time. Media. It's always, what has Darren Lane done for the village? Well, um, what Darren Lane's done for the village this week, I met with an economic developer. I met with 10 landowners, four developers, three builders half dozen small small business owners and most importantly the residents so i don't know i mean am i campaigning against council or am i campaigning against other people is there somebody on council is putting this on He's social media referring to me and i have a, what have i said quote me show me 
<laughs> it's, everyone's saying here no. So we've been through this a thousand times. My recommendation to council is maybe have a compliance and ethics class. Um, you know, that, that's my only re recommendation to council as a citizen is a compliance and ethics class because I'm trying to do everything I can to meet with people and I'm putting out a fire with someone who has not a clue what I'm doing. Um, so that's just one of the things. And you know, another thing is small business and government, I realized, isn't the same. And the day I realized that is when I watched the Baseball Association come in and ask for $3,000 toward their fence. <laughs> How many estimates did they bring? Did they, did they, there's 75 fencing companies in Central Ohio. How many did they go to and say, hey, we got a beautiful ball diamond. Would you be interested in putting in a fence? I just think there needs to be a checks and balance in this village. We had, not that you asked the question there, but we actually went through that in Parks and Committee. No, you, that was all through the Parks Committee. You just didn't see that in Council, but that did take place. Okay, okay. and I'm glad it did because that was something that I no did. No problem. It's a valid concern, but that was addressed. So Council was aware of the different... Well, the way it works is the committee, the Parks Committee, handled that particular aspect and came forward to Council with a recommendation okay. based upon what we what we learned in the Parks Committee. Okay. All right. So, you know, that's just a few things that I want to talk about this evening. And, um, well, that's it. I know there's a lot. I won't hold you guys up any longer. But, you know, I don't think that this is your campaign. This is mine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Well said. All right. Um, I apologize for the next individual. I don't know that I, I read your last name correctly when I wrote it down, but John Dora? Dwayne. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to read your hand right there. I'm sorry. <clears throat> In relation to this uh, parks, fee set up that you're proposing. Um, <clears throat> excuse my voice, they messed up my voice box five years ago on that surgery. Um, but at any rate, what you need to stop and think about is if we raise it, will there be anybody paying it? You now it's pretty much common knowledge you guys have been trying to get rid of steam treasure for at least 10 years. Um, and I guess maybe you've found a way to do it. I don't know if that would do it or not, but uh, this isn't Dublin. We love the steam pressure. The community supports it. It brings in business to all, look, basically all the businesses in town. Uh, it's something you can't measure, just like some of the stuff that he's talking about you can't measure. You know, you get Love Joys, and you got Rex, and you got uh, True Value, and just on and on and on, as well as the bars and so on and so forth. Uh, there's more money comes in on that than people give it credit for. Oh, I'm sorry, what was your last name, sir? Dwig. Dwig? <coughs> yeah, thank you for your comments, Mr. Dwig, and I think everyone here should be here. Yeah, yeah. Ten years on time, so. Yeah, I've been about six more years ago before the contract's up. And that they're locked in at the rate that's on the contract, so there's not much. They got, they got a pretty, pretty decent deal, okay? And I'm one of the guys that wants to keep the same tracers. Okay. There's a number of people that don't want them. Well, there's a few people, but majority of the people can't wait till they get here because it gives them something to do. Basically, the older people. Well, let's take an example of the scooter guys. The scooter guys can't afford a thousand dollars for the blocks. They don't have a big enough group. What about them? Well, they got forty people. Maybe when they come out and ask me for to sponsor a trophy, I'll yeah. give them an extra fifty. Then uh, <coughs> yeah. somebody's got to give them something to, to make up for what we're trying to do to them. Well, the thing is, if if we don't charge more at the park, everybody out here pays for it. Yeah. So we'll try to save all these people out here some money. But if it fails and you don't have anybody there. Uh, you've lost. Well, we'll have to do something different. No, but once you lose them, they're gone. I know. Well, again, I appreciate your comments. Again, everyone shares your sentiment about the steam pressures and, and ensuring that uh, future uh, activities at the park continue. And we're trying to do our best to walk that balancing act of maintaining uh, the park and its uh, ability to be self sufficient and not putting that burden on taxpayers any more than we already do, and balancing that with the interests of organizations that want to be there. So again, thank you very much. Um, 
Mr. or I'm sorry, Amy Rucker. Yeah, I wanted to mention, I read in the paper the other day about the Rockville survey and asking for residents to um, participate in coming up with survey questions. I was a little concerned about the way the article read. It sounded like um, we already had plans on spending how we were going to spend our money. Um, with that being the case, the way, the way that it read, um, I wanted to say that I think we need to move forward as quickly as we can with the survey, especially when we're going to be asking the residents for more tax money. Um, this is, we were talking about the park today. That's one thing that I think um, maybe we need to talk about in the survey. How do you want the park fees to look, knowing that we may need to up the taxes to co help cover that. If we're going to um, tell the citizens that we're going to charge them whatever it is, the park fee, I, I don't, I didn't catch exactly what it was. We need to um, maybe ask for their, their input in that. The other thing is um, we don't, us, we haven't seen this paperwork. We haven't seen what the fees are going to be. We don't know what the, um, what the, um, I don't know what, what you were calling it, the, um, paperwork we can fill out to get oh, into the grant committee, the grant committee application. applications mm -hmm. look like is there any way we can view that on the internet we come to these meetings and we only hear what you guys are saying but yet we can't see what's being proposed so and for the sake of transparency is there any way that we can get access to that before these meetings so we know what you're talking about I know it hasn't been our practice to generally release documents that we've yet to vote on and make part of, you know, official government uh, documents. I mean, at that, at that point, we'd be putting up revision after revision. But it is our general practice, I understand, uh, to once we pass a resolution, pass a law, or make something, um, you know, binding, so to speak, or official, that it's provided to the residents. So we have to pass to find out what's in it. <laughs> well, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll take legislation should be posted so that the people know what's being voted on. Yeah, I, I, that's, I, that's I, been I my biggest problem all along. Mean, but, uh, on a regular basis, things that we've discussed here, <coughs> we have extra copies. I know we've made them available yeah. to the press, and I can't remember us ever turning yeah, it down. Yeah, turn it down. It's not a matter of I think we're trying to hide anything. Yeah. Well, it's not that. It's not that. Uh, I, maybe what we can do going forward is have more copies of things to pass around. Uh, for Put it in the bag public. and everybody will read it. Because you're going to ask us, I mean, we know we're going to be asked for tax money. And we want to be able to say, hey, we know why we're being asked for this. And right now we can't well, We can't say that because we don't yeah, know we what's going on. We want you to know on. those things as well. You know? Obviously. We want an informed voter base. <coughs> um, but to address your, um, your comment, uh, Ms. Rucker, about the... Um, the questions in the survey I, we all agree it needs to get done sooner than later uh, we talked about last meeting uh, asking for uh, uh, volunteers for the comprehensive plan and for the, the levy committee and we still have that on the table we'd like to see folks come forward so we can put that together sooner than later because that's part of what the levy committee would be doing but this this park thing is the perfect thing to ask about on the survey what do you want from this park do you want to have people have to pay that much do you or do you want to make it more open for the citizens do you want a resident fee versus an everybody fee do you want a difference there this is the kind of thing we need to ask we agree. i think yeah we agree on that and the survey needs to go out but in order to do that we need to get the, um, the committee together and we're actively searching for committee members you number one yeah, I'll do it. Sure, if you're going to take it, you already voluntold. Sounds like our decision. Well, it sounds like you have some wonderful ideas. Uh, anything else? No, that was it. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all of our speakers. All right, so moving on, we have no old business. Is that correct? Yeah. A couple comments, please. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the budget documents that, that were uh, distributed. Uh, the draft. Could you please start putting version control on it? Date. Make sure every document is dated, and, and we know exactly what version it is, so we don't get the, the documents mixed up. Please. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other comments? Yeah, I got something to ask. When are we going to have this social media thing in place so we can vote on? Is that in your court? Yeah, I drafted something a while ago. Yeah, I think it's, it needs to be dusted off and brought back okay. up. 
next meeting I'll 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 take a look at it because I know I'm pretty sure I sent it to the mayor and maybe even the council. Yeah, okay. But we'll put it up there next time. All right, sounds good. Mr. Moore, do you have any other comments? I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um, I guess before we move on to new businesses, we're doing comments. I had a couple comments. Um, did we ever finalize that we were going to do or endorse the Make a Difference Day? I know we had talked about October 20th, I believe it was. I think it's the proclamation last council meeting. I think it was October 20th or 23rd, whatever. Okay. October 24th. 24th. October 24th. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, the PCABA then wanted me to confirm that we did that and just kind of throw it out there again. That they'll be at the ballpark. Uh, anyone wants to make a difference at the ballpark and go out there and work with them. Um, one other issue that I had, I have uh, in my neighborhood, one of the houses, folks uh, had a goat for many months. And I could hear it, whatever goats do, braying or I don't know what goats do, or whatever it's called, for months. And as I understand it, there is nothing in our regulations prohibiting folks in our uh, village from having livestock in their backyard. Um, based upon me bringing it up, you can all guess that I probably don't think that that's a good idea. Ask any uh, realtor how it is to sell a house besides someone who has goats or chickens or pigs, and they would probably tell you that you would have a lousy time trying to get your value back out of your house because your neighbor decided to have a farm on less than one acre. So, um, any thoughts on that? Part of that addressed in the property management. Such as you could have one goat in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to tweak that a little bit. I'm sorry, but I I didn't pick up the fact that I, I knew the issue was on chickens and I have neighbors with chickens and roosters <coughs> not really happy about it, but it hasn't really bothered me. But if you're getting to larger animals uh, I think that's a, a health problem, to be honest with you. I think it's a health problem, and again, as I said, I mean, it, it seriously, ask any realtor, it decreases the property value of your home. Hang on. We'll, we, oh, no, never mind, I'm sorry, I was reading the wrong section. Goats, pigs, sheep, horses, llamas, etc. Um, are only permitted in rural districts. All right, so, so you can happen. have one of what such animal then? The one of what's, uh, the one animal you could have is a chicken, duck, rabbit, or similar animals. Keeping of chickens, ducks, rabbits, or similar farm animals in, in cages and coops in enclosures for the keeping of such animals shall be governed by the following restrictions, and it's one animal. You can have one chicken? Yeah. Uh, well, no, it's on the size of the lot. Good size. Yeah. Uh, no more than one such animal shall be kept on a parcel of land for each 870 square feet. Um, no more than six. Yeah, it was like no more than a ten total such animals, six of which may be chickens. And does that address roosters? roosters? Yeah, no roosters. No roosters. No roosters. Okay. Yeah, and no goats. Or cows. Or Okay. What does that mean for your dad's room? My neighbor's dog was a goat. Your dad's room's not wrong. They have horses. 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 This is in residential districts that we're talking about. I thought you said it's only rural. It's a non residential district. Yes. Okay, back to the ground. All right. That would be part of it. Yeah, um, sorry. yeah it's incorporating it. That's like the last part. Mm -hmm. All right. On the the only side. one that's not incorporated is the Blue House that sits just south of it. Yeah, that's our thing. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry to throw salt over there. That's all right. Um, bicentennial fund. I'm still waiting for the state. I emailed them today asking about it, and I have not heard back. So. All right, so we'll table that. Mm -hmm. uh, surcharge ordinance amendment. Sent this out to us, right? Yep. Yep. Any comments, questions, concerns about that particular resolution? Is this just moving that to different funds? It's just, it's the same. Yeah, it, and we didn't actually move it into different funds. It was always going into the correct fund. It's just in the ordinance it stated something different. It's ordinance 4 15. I have a motion. 
This is going through the normal three readings. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion to approve 4-15. Second. All second. Ms. Davis? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. All right, thank you. And the budget amendment, please, and street. Is that what we've already tabled? No, no, that's no, no, no this year. These are, yeah, these are appropriations. The police resolution for the 20,000 is 2115. Oh, that's the, for the new vehicle. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question, please, dear? Chief, is that when we talked about the uh, the new police cruiser? It was indicated that it was within your 2015 budget. Yeah, correct. No, it's not within my 2015 budget. It was the money reappropriated from my police funds. Oh, from the police fund. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. It's, not from, it's not from the general fund. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Are we good? Yeah. Can I want to get over on that. 2115. I have a motion for 2115. Motion to approve the uh, first reading of 2115. Second. Ms. Davis? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. All right, thank you. And then I would assume 22.15 for the appropriation of the money for the uh, improvements to the Lantern Lane. This is coming out of the street fund. Street Reserve Fund. Mm -hmm. Motion for that. Motion to approve 2215. All right. Ms. Davis? Yes. Ms. Ferguson? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Ms. Perkins? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. All right. Uh, concludes our new business. <coughs> I have a question. Uh, I didn't know what, are we bringing up the lieutenant spot? For the police department after the budget that we're talking about the budget next time because we were supposed to bring up the resolution for the new lieutenant's position um, that wasn't on our new business i'm not sure i read that for personal finance minutes either mm -hmm. that was discussed i mean i know no we discussed it in yeah. personnel and finance several times right yeah because I had even drawn, I remember I made up the resolution and everything. Apparently, no one remembers doing something. I passed it out to everyone. Okay, but that's for 2016. You're wanting to do that for. Right? Oh, that's your budget. Right, that's your wanted, budget. Okay, I want to start the process so to get the lieutenant spot. Oh, okay. I but if we have to wait that. for the budget to be approved, I guess, we, I mean, we can wait because we still have time, I believe. I got a question. What's the benefit of a lieutenant over having two sergeants? Well, because a lieutenant does administrative work, and we used to have a lieutenant. When Chief Hilbert was here, uh, Jim Hill was a lieutenant. And once when Jim became chief, they, get, they did away with the lieutenant spot. All that lieutenant's administrative duties were dumped, I don't want to say dumped, but given to uh, both sergeants, myself and Sergeant Jaskowitz at the time. So we're actually... The sergeant, both sergeants have been doing administrative work for the last, you know, how many years now? And I'd like to get that lieutenant spot back. I have a lieutenant or a sergeant that's got 14 years, uh, 14 years of experience as a sergeant. And I, I like to keep moving forward so it looks, I mean, th that he always looks forward to something to, I mean, to better himself or not just the sergeant, anybody at the police department, something to look forward to, to move. You know, to move up to a different position. You might hate your job. Uh, once I resign, or, <laughs> or, 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 or when I retire, yes, that's what I'm trying to do. Is try to get, you know, to develop that person to maybe take my job one of these days after I retire. Does that answer your question, or I, I mean, I can go on. <laughs> That's different than an inspector position we had discussed during the work session, correct? Inspector? Or investigator? Investigator. Well, that's only, you know, maybe after March. Okay. I, don't have the, I don't have the money to it's do that. Thing, 
Yeah. Right, that'd be higher than the ninth grade. Seventy-five thousand. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And creating a new lieutenant's position would cost what kind of cost to the village? Well, it would increase salaries, of course, and it would increase the chief salary and the lieutenant's salary, which would be the sergeant would increase his salary. How would it increase your salary? Uh, probably by four thousand dollars at the time I top out. But why would it increase your salary? Because if you have a lieutenant spot between the sergeant spot, the sergeant the lieutenant's definitely gonna have to make more money than the sergeant. Why? Uh, he, you know what I mean, why does it increase your salary? Because if not, then the lieutenant would be making as much money as the chief. And there's there some regulation or ordinance <coughs> that says that, that has to there has to be that delineation. Well, what benefit would it be to be the chief if that? No, I'm just asking. I mean, I'm not being <laughs> right, right. I'm not tacky. I'm just curious. Is that per any regulation, or is that just something that you need to establish a hierarchy amongst the officers and yourself? Exactly. Right. So, I'm not doing it to get a raise. I'm doing it to change the structure of the police department to make the police department a better place, a more place, or a better place for that people want to still work for or still work at. We've been very lucky to keep the people that we have for the years that we have because it used to be a training ground. For people just to come in and work and then move to a bigger agency so i i want to give something for the guys to look forward to you know to advancement establish a career path right and right, you're so. still in your budget correct yes i'm still within so. my budget all right so this is something we're going to address next meeting yes obviously there's nothing prepared for this meeting or is that something we're addressing next year with the budget? No, next meeting. Next meeting? Next council or next personnel finance? Next council. Okay. Are we going to ask Ross Mill to help us go over this before? No, I think we're, we're perfectly capable of discussing it and make a decision. Well, what I don't like about it is we're supposed to have $1.8 million. If we're going backwards, we keep spending the money we got saved back. Of course, ain't you know, we don't have no money saved back. Then, then we'll have to start laying off some of the To be able to get to a consolidated, like, balance sheet, which I mentioned earlier. And I think, Renee, you caught what I had asked for. Okay. It's a way where we could see what the net of the budget is and what what the remaining general fund reserve is right. estimated to be at the close of this year at the close of next year uh, it's just a few few things that we need to to look at to be able to make a credible decision on passing the budget or not and that'll answer whether your concerns valid or not yeah okay. because they they well they told us in the review that we shouldn't go backwards I'm not sure I heard that. Well, I'm not sure what you mean by go backwards. Well, we like stop re spending ready, reserves. Ready? That's what I've been talking about. Stop, stop spending more money until we have more income. Right, stop yeah. spending more than what we got. Well, yeah, and then and then we did discuss and, and pass raise, raises last year for the police on top of what would be new <coughs> for a couple positions. I mean, that is something we need to discuss. Um, <coughs> keep spending more than what you take. <coughs> That's not good business. Agree. We agree on that. Any other questions or concerns or comments before Mr. Walter wraps us up? Uh, we need to go into executive session to discuss a personnel issue. Yeah, so we need to do that. You're right. Okay. <coughs> Motion to you want the executive session for what? Is it is it employment? Appointment compensation compensation of the public. Yes, I'm sorry. I forgot it has to be worded perfectly. Yeah, I made such a motion. Ms. Davis. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Ferguson. Yes. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yeah. Ms. Perkins. Yes. Mr. Walter. Yes. Which one is it? Oh, yeah. Which one is it? Good point. Right. Uh, and just to let you all know, I don't think we have anything else to discuss. You're obviously free to wait around until we come back out of executive session, but I think you'll you probably won't see anything or hear anything of substance after that. Yes, sir. A few things real quick, but you don't mind. Uh, one UPCO meeting is Thursday night, seven o'clock library, and also run walk is Saturday the 26th, seven o'clock over at the park. And it would be really nice to see some of the 
leadership from the village show up to help because we really, really, really need volunteers out there on course. And, and if you're not running in it, of course, but uh, some of the other things, concession stands, things like that. So love to have you guys out there. Great. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks. In case no one caught it, we need people for the levy committee and the comprehensive plan committee. Thank you.